um, you know, so generous with their time to put together and to donate with, and then uh, kind of the various different areas that um, that you know people have done before, what it, uh, what different ideas might have. Uh, Harris Steg is up here as well. Just you know, maybe he could talk through some some concepts that exist, or maybe some things that they've seen or done. And I, and I know a lot of people, uh, maybe out here at different tables, have have done different things. And and uh, just from over the years of what we've seen other people do, it, it's pretty amazing. Um, I'm not sure if my slides are easily on there or not, but I can speak uh, without it, which is fine. It's it's no problem. Um, ultimately, the, the only slides I really kind of had uh, were talking through, like I said, really where uh, where the money goes that does come in to Cure CMD, and and uh, absolutely um, what we've always kind of focused on primarily is um, is really the research, and it, it's kind of nice that we kind of followed uh, Gustavo's um, presentation because ultimately, uh, the, at its uh, core, that's really what Cure CMD was was focused on on looking at doing was was funding. Uh, research grants along the way, and and um, we have been able to, uh, you know, very much so, uh, put out grants really since I think really our second year of of existence, uh, which really was just in uh, we started in 2008, so we're not even quite 10 years old yet, um, and and we were able to put stuff out, and we kind of had the philosophy uh, very early on with the size of what we were that uh, we could kind of put out these somewhat um, seed grants basically, and and look at, we didn't have nearly the financial uh, power that other organizations did, uh, but we knew that there was this gap where there were uh, science in kind of the preclinical area or um, just kind of just getting started that, that honestly needed that boost to get them through a year or two before they could really kind of begin to prove certain things that ultimately could kind of open them up to much larger funding sources uh, like the federal government or, or other uh, sources that are out there. And so we've, uh, we've kind of uh, formulated our grant program to kind of assist with those. Uh, generally speaking, uh, what our grants have for the most part been, have been in the thirty to fifty thousand uh, dollar uh, grants. Uh, some of them have gone up to a hundred thousand or a little bit beyond and and um, and they've maybe transferred over a couple years in order to do that. Um, ultimately, what we do is we have a scientific advisory board that is, goes through and scores grants. Uh, they're made up of uh, kind of peer scientists as well as uh, people that have helped us along the way in kind of directing our, our science program. They score it and then depending on how much funding we have, we, we award it at that point in time and let that go through. Uh, those scientists are then charged with ultimately reporting back to us on a quarterly basis as to how things are going and then kind of being accountable for, uh, for the funding that they've provided and been able to kind of uh, uh, allow us some sense of understanding that they are moving forward. Um, you know, and certainly um, all of this was, uh, was an incredible amount of effort just to kind of get started. Uh, most of you here are familiar with uh, Dr. Anna Rakowski, who obviously was uh, co-founder of, of the organization, and she did just a phenomenal amount of work in order to, quite frankly, connect all the different people and all these different fields to get it all going. And um, you know, I know it was an absolute labor of love on, on her part to, to pull it together, and, and it's amazing uh, kind of what, what she's built from that aspect. Um, so again, uh, you know, money as far as where, where it has kind of gone, I think um, historically I was looking at it before we came out, I think about 68 uh, to 70 percent of, of all the funds that uh, we've kind of expended have been into direct research grants along the way. Um, some of the other areas that money goes to is, is also on some of these other uh, presentations. The registry uh, takes, uh, takes a considerable amount of uh, effort and funding to kind of keep it going. Uh, just with the, some of the back-end technology costs of it, but also kind of the people that have to kind of help curate and pull through. We do an awful lot um, uh, with really what we do put towards it because an awful lot of uh, people you've met here in kind of these uh, beautiful cardigans are actually volunteering a lot of their time to kind of do it. And, um, and, and it's, it's been amazing kind of what they've been able to pull off. Um, we have funded uh, a handful of scientific conferences along the way. Uh, we're very fortunate in that this conference and the scientific conferences that led up to it, uh, the PCORI grant that multiple people have mentioned, um, was extremely uh, instrumental in being able to, to pull all this together. And um, it, it's been magnificent. It's also um, 
taken up a lot of everybody's time, which is, um, it's been great, but it's, it's kind of been, this has been the focus uh, for really kind of the crew and the staff over the last year, and, and obviously it's turned out wonderful and, and amazing, but what it begins is uh, we kind of look, okay, tomorrow begins, okay, post, post SIFAM, right? And, and it, so it kind of becomes a, a look back at what, uh, what we were doing uh, previously. And so it, it's gonna be a lot of kind of building out that again and getting the, the grant cycle process kind of moving again to where we, we reach out and, and we'll uh, kind of talk to certain scientists and, and begin to kind of look at uh, how that uh, process kind of moves forward. So from that step, we kind of go, uh, that's kind of really where the money's gone. So Bean will talk a bit about uh, development and then uh, you know if anybody has questions, Harris can kind of pipe in as well. Um, I will say before, and I don't want to rip into your, what you probably already about to say also, but I will say that multiple people have done a variety of different things, a variety of different sizes. Um, there's nothing too small. There's nothing um, that's a bad idea, quite frankly. I mean, there have been some of the coolest little ideas that people have come up with that I would have never in 100 years thought about. Um, and, and some things are very simple. Some people, um, you know, almost like a Christmas letter. They just send a letter to friends saying, hey, this is what's going on, and, and that's what they're comfortable with, and that's fine, and that's great, and that's uh, extremely effective for, for various people, and, and, um, and so that's it. So, beforehand, this being, thank you to everybody for everything this weekend. Thank you to everybody who's uh, ever done anything at all, uh, whether it's fundraising or donating or just answering a question for another, uh, another uh, kind of affected individual or family member. It's, it's really amazing, and, and so thank you, Sabine. <laughs> Thank you very much and apologize for the technical difficulties, and, but there's a lot of um, help here in the room, so I really appreciate it. Um, so this was quite a whirlwind three days with all of you, and uh, we made a lot of connections, became friends, so um, it's really been a privilege uh, for me to spend so much time with all of you and to get to know you much better. I'm the Director of Development here at QRCMD, as you all know, and I would like to give you a brief overview of how you can help um, to move research forward um, to find treatments and cures for the CMDs. Um, but first, I would like to take a look back uh, over the last um, past 18 months and go over a few highlights. Um, so in green, you see everything that pertains to the PCORI Award. So um, we connected with Terry Silaki on New Year's Eve in 2015 and roped her in to help us um, write the application for the uh, PCORI um, award. And um, together with uh, Rachel Alvarez and Anne Rukowski, they put this app together in record time and managed uh, to submit it by the deadline of February 1st. In May, we um, were notified that we are receiving um, the PCORI Award to organize this conference series. And then, of course, in 2016 and the first half year of 2017, we were busy with organizing the uh, preceding conference series and um, now the main family and scientific conference. We also uh, published released eight webinars um, that um, were related to the four subtypes uh, specific conferences. Um, so you can access those on the QRCMD YouTube channel. Uh, on other, in other news, we moved out of Dr. Ann Rukowski's house in March 2016. It really became cozy in that one bedroom we were using and we got to the point that Joe, who's here, Ann's husband, he's here with Maya, their daughter, and he started calling us the in-laws. So it's like, <laughs> so, you know, it kind of got too cozy, too cramped, and I'm sure they're happy to have more privacy again. Um, so we moved into a beautiful office in Torrance, much uh, more central and accessible for everybody. Um, in May, uh, Dr. Ann Rukowski stepped down from uh, her responsibilities as scientific director for QRCMD. And also when we, were, uh, when we received the PCORI award, Terry Silaki joined the team as PCORI project support and is mainly in uh, uh, charge of uh, public relations, but she was also very instrumental in setting everything up and organizing 
things. And then in, in uh, September, Gustavo, who you have just heard, was hired as new scientific director. So Cure's mission, uh, Cure CMD's mission is to advance research for treatments and a cure for the congenital muscular dystrophy and to improve the lives for, of those living with CMD through engagement and support of our community. So in order to achieve this and to fulfill our mission, we really need your help. And, um, oh, there's Mark too, that's great. So um, we are a fairly young organization and compared to other patient organizations, we are small and we do not have the same support. So our uh, disorder prevalence is fairly rare, rare compared to others like cancer and so on. And um, we have low overhead, that's really a positive. We are a small team. Many of us uh, put a huge number of volunteer time in as well. And we rely on peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And the network, obviously, is fairly small because the disease, the disorder, is rare. So not many people know about CMD. So it's really important that we increase awareness. Um, so we need more awareness. We also do not have any corporate or institutional sponsors. Um, we are looking for those as well, so if anybody has any suggestions or an employer that m might be willing to support us, that would be awesome. A celebrity spokesperson would be very beneficial to us as well. You know, a sports person, uh, somebody from the entertainment industry would make a huge difference. And um, we also are looking to get exposure in the media, you know, be it um, for Rare Disease Day at the end of February, or even for this conference, we couldn't find anybody to, to cover, you know, and to, to post a little blurb somewhere. Um, so it's really hard, and I think we desperately need that in order to grow. Um, so I would like to uh, welcome Mark Baer. He's um, one of our community members who just recently had a really successful fundraiser and he's going to share some of his tips and also maybe take some of the uh, you know daunting steps out of you know your minds and so thank you so much Mark. Yeah hi um, I'm sorry for the 99% of the people in the room who can't understand me but there's at least one Australian who can so <laughs> this talk is just for you two Australians sorry. Um, so, yeah, my name is Mark, uh, my wife's name is Jessica, and we have a daughter, Bella, who has Lama 2. And uh, we did a fundraiser last year, that was our first fundraiser um, we've done since diagnosis. And for us it was amazingly successful and quite overwhelming to do. And um, I was trying to think about what, what really made it successful. We ended up raising about $30,000 from, from this fundraiser. I'm wearing actually the shirt from the fundraiser. And, uh, what I did is I did a, a triathlon where I carried my daughter's body weight through the race and just to try and come up with something that was a little bit different and hadn't been done before might might be shared or might be have a higher chance of being shared than if I walked a 5k or something like that or just just to try to do something creative um, and I guess one of the things that we we tried to do and I've, I've seen this a bit in the community as well as it's kind of counterintuitive we actually spent a little bit of money to try and fundraise so we we went a little bit extra and paid somebody to make a video for us because I'm not very good at creating videos and, and we found that creating a video that announced the fundraiser kind of showcased our daughter and, and you know, her condition and, and also outlined a little bit about where things go from here. We found that really helped. Like people, uh, I hate social media a lot of the time because it's just a scroll trap but um, in, the, in this case we put this video up and and put it out to our friends and, and we asked them to just to give $25 because that was the weight that I was carrying. If they could not give that much, then give less. If they could give more, then, then great. And if they couldn't give anything, just share it. And um, we were hoping to get $5,000 within 24 hours because of the Australian time, uh, the Australian time zone, actually. We had $8,000. Um, it was shared about 300 times and the video got about 30000 views so social media can be <laughs> a big time suck sometimes but for the sake of sharing something like this and something that's so visual like the 
unfortunately, unfortunately, in some ways, the, this condition is quite easy to see the effects of, and, and that people really respond to when they see that shared on Facebook. So, yeah, so we did a, did a video, and that was really successful, and the fundraiser was great. QSCMD was awesome. Um, we used CrowdRise as a fundraising platform. And uh, the benefits of that is that the money just goes straight to the charity and never passes past us, which um, is good for tax reasons. And um, yeah, Sabine came out to the race. She brought QSCMD water bottles. So I, was, I was labeled and, and uh, in general, it was, it was really great and encourage you to try and do something if you feel inclined. Thank you so much, Mark. And I really enjoyed seeing you sweating with the 25 pounds on your back. <laughs> Paris Steak is... A yeah, hi, welcome. Um, my wife is on the board, named Stephanie. My name's Harris. We have a nine-year-old son with LCMD. He's home uh, enjoying camp right now. So we didn't bring him down, but I wanted to kind of build on some of the things Mark said. And one of the advantages I found, one of the many advantages of this conference is talking to other people about ideas and fundraising. And it was interesting. Everyone I talked to kind of had the same initial reaction, which is I hate the ask. There's this psychological block for everyone. It's like, you hate to ask. You hate to ask family and friends and your extended network. And, and it's, there, there's some comfort in knowing that everyone kind of shares in that. Um, everyone has their own pride, their own comfort level. And I think uh, knowing that other people feel the same way um, kind of emboldens you and says, OK, that's a common thing. Let's work past it because it's so important. And I, I think, though, mixed in with that, something very important that Pat said is that you have to be comfortable with what you're doing what your fundraiser is, because if you're not comfortable, you can't sell it. So figuring out, you know, if your comfort zone is doing an online thing only, then do the online thing, because if you're comfortable, you're going to do it a lot more effectively. Um, if your comfort zone is doing something in person where you're getting people together at a ballpark, we've had some modest success doing that locally, then do that. But figure out what you're good at, what you're comfortable doing, and, and make that your focus. Uh, so we, yeah, sure. I was, I was going to say this, but um, we're, the, we're the same way. Like, we, we don't want to burn friendships because we're asking for money all the time. And, and like, I, I don't know how often we'll try and do fundraisers, and I'm not sure if the second or third one would be anywhere near as successful as, as what we did the first time around. But what, what I found was that th this is a hard disease to explain to people. And, and um, you know, even for us, we've got different kids with different <laughs> diagnosis. And um, a lot of people want to help. And a lot of people want to understand, and this video actually helped them understand, and this gave them an outlet to help us. And so our friends and family were looking for something, and they were more than happy to give some money to try and help us and, and show some support. So it wasn't really an ask. People wanted to do it, and, and I think that was, that was a really promising thing. Yeah, and I, I think that's exactly. Everyone who has that similar experience is you hate the ask, but then you get when you do, you realize that people want to give and they're very generous and they like to be a part of it. Um, the other thing that we found in, in uh, our last two or three fundraisers is that you may be asking your friends and your family, but, and they're very willing to donate, but the, the best ask we've found are the corporate, the corporate money, and not enormous Fortune 500 corporations asking for tens of thousands of dollars, but just local companies asking them if they'll sponsor at a $250 or a $500 rate. And once you start getting one or two, it's a lot of momentum to then keep going to other companies. Um, and we've had a good amount of success in our, in our last uh, baseball park fundraiser in getting, you know, about $10,000 in people buying tickets and about $20,000 in the corporate sponsors, because those will start to roll. Uh, and like I said, once you get one, it opens the door to call into another company and say, hey, look, uh, this company gave 250 Would you be willing to sponsor at that level or go a step higher? Uh, but I think it is really important to recognize we all are in a similar boat. No one likes to make these asks. And uh, you know, find what you're comfortable doing and do it. It is critically important that we keep this momentum from this conference and try to build. And like Pat said, any idea, anything that brings in, doesn't have to be a $50,000 donation, but even a few thousand dollars here and there. Even a monthly donation, if that's what you're comfortable doing, or at, for approaching your family to do a monthly donation is, is, is all very helpful. Um, and I, you know, like I said, there's the online and the in-person. There's a whole bunch of different ideas. The, the, the races are wonderful. Uh, and I, I know Pat can probably speak to some of the other ideas he's seen roll in over the years. But there's been some people with uh, just great ideas that have brought a lot of money in over the years. So. Oh, do you want to speak? Uh, no, I, I mean, it, and it's, it's exactly it. I mean, and, and um, 
I think Harris nailed it on, on comfort level and, and what uh, what you're happy to or willing to kind of work with and and I you know kind of echo even what Marcus said too is like I totally get it also you know that you kind of feel like you're asking the same people all the time and and so we've seen a lot of people will do something and then maybe take a year off and do it again because they don't want to be pinging uh, family and friends all the time um, and I and I think we all also recognize that. Um, you know, everybody in here is also dealing with a, you know, plenty of uh, financial issues anyway. Uh, with respect to uh, all the, uh, it's not a, uh, it's not a cheap thing to be dealing with, uh, just from its own standpoint. And so, completely recognize that everybody's got that, um, and and obviously taking care of your family should always come first and foremost. Um, and so, sometimes it is kind of getting out and getting uh, really at the corporate level, like Harris is saying. If some of that is just asking, because a lot of times that's sitting there and and people's. Um, you know, HR departments or, or uh, you know, upper level uh, have little foundations or things that are just sitting there, and quite honestly, they're they're looking for places to put it, but it's not top of mind that they're out searching for it, and so they just need people to kind of come and come and ask. Great, thank you guys so much for your input. Um, I also would like to um, acknowledge a family that's here today, the Knudsens, and they're very successful. Put, successfully put on uh, pasta dinners every year uh, to benefit CureCMD, so that's awesome. Thank you so much. And um, <laughs> I'm sure I, I apologize if I miss anybody that in here that's put fundraisers on for us, but we really, really appreciate all you do, and we know it's a it's a huge um, uh, you know endeavor to to do that but I agree I mean you've brought up very good points um, do something you feel comfortable with a bake sale pasta dinner you know um, like lemonade stand whatever any any amount helps us out so no amount is too small and um, I hope to to see more of it and if you need any support please don't hesitate to contact us you know we are more than happy to send out email blasts as well or post um, things on social media we are our Facebook page is linked to Twitter so we can distribute this and uh, we can help you out so don't hesitate to call us and contact us so um, So there's a, a number of ways you can contribute to Cure CMD. So on our homepage, we have the, um, we are linked to Network for Good. That's our donation processor. So you can just go to curecmd slash donate and it will take you to that site. Um, you can pick the fund you would like to contribute to. You can also dedicate your donation to somebody and ask that we acknowledge um, the honoree and we will do that and um, so the fees are fairly low but um, it's really very convenient so we've had this uh, platform for quite a while. Uh, Mark Baer for example used CrowdRise that's a very um, well-known um, fundraising platform and lends itself for campaigns so um, that works very well as well but and also we have Facebook um, fundraise pages so but that's your own personal fundraiser and the only drawback with that is that um, we will not get the donor information so that means we cannot um, connect with the donors we can't expand our donor donor database and we also cannot send them more information about CureCMD so unless they look look CureCMD up by themselves um, they, they won't be educated about our organizations and, and who knows whether they will come back and donate again. So it's always a challenge, but I think it's really important to, to stay connected to the donors. Um, another platform is Indiegogo and all these platforms um, have various, uh, various fees. So really the uh, most, um, the best deal is Network for Good, donating via our, via our um, homepage and uh, CrowdRise. And of course, um, donating by personal checks. And we have a pile of remittance envelopes outside. And uh, if you feel free to take a whole bunch and distribute those in your neighborhood or in your community, you know. So you never know. I mean, it, everything is on here. So um, 
I, I would really recommend you donation go to our homepage or um, through a campaign launched on CrowdRise. We have a CrowdRise Cure CMD page that's, that's linked with our Network for Good um, platform. So, um, and there's other ways to support Cure CMD, and you all got a little pamphlet in your conference bag. Just want to point out two, two of these. Uh, one are the uh, corporate matching programs. So your employer may be able to match your contribution, so you double your donation. And if you, you're not sure, you can go by your human resources department and ask whether they are willing to uh, match your donation. And um, that, that, that way you just um, doubled your input. And the other way, um, good option is shopping. So who doesn't shop on Amazon.com? So you can go to smile.amazon.com. You keep your profile that you have established on Amazon.com and you use, choose CureCMD as your favorite charity. So we get 0.5% of your uh, purchases. So that's, that's up to a couple of hundred dollars average every every quarter or so so I mean it's very helpful and it's money you don't have you're spending anyways so it's not extra money coming out of your pocket um, 0 0.5 and there are special days I think where they increase the percentage um, but we, we get such short notice of that and we try to post it on Facebook as well to notify the uh, community um, we also have a interest finder in your um, bag, and we would like to find out whether you would like uh, you're willing to launch fund fundraisers and for which funds, the general research fund or one of the research funds for the different subtypes, or if you have any skills and talents that you would like to share with us that you think would be useful for CureCMD or if you have any media relations, um, if you could connect us, introduce us to, I don't know, friend, the neighbor that's uh, active, you know, in the media, that would be incredibly helpful. And uh, if you could complete this and leave it with us at the registration desk, that would be amazing. So fundraising is really important for various reasons. So first of all, we can fund research which will benefit um, the, your children, your families. And we can also expand our donor base. And we, this is very helpful for like end of the year fundraisers. Um, we will send out email blasts, make people aware of, um, of us and that we're here, that we need your money. And a lot of people are very willing to donate at the end of the year, but really we need a continuous income stream throughout the year in order to better plan to support research grants. You know, if we get the monies in at the end of the year, we first have to figure out how much we can spend, and then we have to identify some grants that we would like to support, and I think we will lose very precious time to move research along. So if people could donate throughout the year, it would be really helpful for planning purposes. Um, with increasing the donor base, we will also increase awareness. And the same thing, if we can pump out some good research results, this will increase awareness too, because that we, we have a story, we, we have something to, to talk about. So, and that, that's really all that it, it is about. We need, we need to spread the word. Um, oh, okay. That's something. So increasing awareness and expanding the donor base really are at the center of a healthy, effective nonprofit organization, and you can all be of help with this. So we, I really hope you will step up and, um, okay, there, awareness rate rises. So connect and inspire. I geomapped um, the 500 U.S registrants with a CMD that we have in the, in the CMDIR that uh, was spoken about earlier. And see, there's quite many. We, we cover the U.S. pretty well. 
So, um, so we have 500 and about 150 of those 500 actually have attended or are still here attending the conference and that's a huge turnout. Um, so we are really, really happy with this. And, um, but unfortunately, only about 15% of those 500 have ever donated to Cure CMD. And we need 100%. We need 100% of support. And um, we understand, as Pat has said, I mean, you all have quite a few things to juggle. But I think if we spread the word, if we reach out, if we ask, people will be happy to support us. You know, I mean, it's all, it's all about the ask, and it's, it's hard sometimes. But if we don't ask, people won't even know about CMDs. And usually people are very happy to give. So, but they need to know. So, if, and uh, so I already mentioned it would be great to have a continuous income stream, and even a monthly pledge of ten dollars, you know, of five hundred um, registrants would be incredibly helpful. You know, it would um, help, and we could fund more research. Um, so you all live, I don't know if you can see that these are tiny villages, all the pins, I've tried to add villages on there. So you all live in one of these villages. Um, and we are all working together to achieve the same goals, to raise awareness, to find the resources, to fund and co-found research projects and clinical trials. So in the past, we have supported research um, with over 1.5 million, and that's quite, um, a good success uh, for being a small organization and, um, and relying on peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And um, we are actually also um, supporting cutting-edge technology such as CRISPR. And you know, we, we are at the forefront here. We really try hard and, uh, to put your money to, to good work. And QCMD is always striving to stretch your contribution to make your dollar go further, and we are developing partnerships with other patient organizations, such as um, the MD UK the, in England, the Muscular Dystrophy Organization, or with AFM Telethon from France. Um, and that, again, will make your contribution go further. Um, so the theme of this conference series is building momentum through congenital muscular dystrophy stakeholder participation. We have created the momentum, momentum and now we have to take it to the next level and identify priority research projects and generate the funding needed to support them, to, to bring them to fruition. And so if all the stakeholders that include all of you as well and us at the foundation, uh, put their resources behind the goal of finding uh, treatments and cures for CMD, we will succeed. So this weekend, the CMD village has grown. <laughs> Somebody wants me to stop, I think. <laughs> this weekend, the CMD village has grown. It is our hope that you will be leaving feeling connected and inspired tonight. Please take this inspiration and renewed momentum home to your villages, to raise awareness, to educate your neighbors, friends, and politicians about CMD and convince them to commit their support to your family, the CMD community, and Cure CMD. And we thank you so very much for traveling to DC and for attending this conference. It was really quite a ride. So thank you so much to all of you and all for your support as well. Okay. Um, Donating is only a mouse click away, curacmd slash donate. If you have any questions, if you need any support, please email to donate at curacmd.org. And looking ahead, um, in May 2018, CureCMD is celebrating its 10th anniversary. So stay tuned. Um, we, we try to have some special activities for that occasion. Thank you so much for your attention and any questions. Nope.